Good morning. Welcome to Yakult Community Church. We're so glad all of you are here this morning, this frosty, cold morning. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read something to you, and I'll let you know where it's from in a minute. But um, it says, you who are and the way you live, it's that that counts before God. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is looking out for, for those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. So it's kind of a familiar verse and not, but it's from John 4:24. but it's the message. So they just worded it a little differently. <laughs> but I like the way um, it says those are, the, the original one is those who worship God, worship in, in spirit and truth. Anyway, that's what he wants from us this morning as we worship together. So we, I'm going to invite you to stand up and we can sing together. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. 
and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder. The mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath, and living water. Such a marvelous going to go to fellowship. I guess we can stand back up again. <laughs> okay. All right, please find your seats. This morning is the, the end of what has been like a three-week mini stewardship campaign. Uh, we had a, an original stewardship campaign for our church building project two years ago. And uh, three weeks ago, we, we kicked off a, a second, smaller campaign. So if you're just visiting today and you haven't been here any of the last three weeks, not all of this will, will uh, make a whole lot of sense um, without that context. So, but it is a special service in, in that sense. But it's also um, a special service because we kind of knew this day was coming. Uh, with um, a family in our church that that has been here sometimes over the last number of years as they've been transitioning in their life. They have um, bought a home in Idaho and have moved there. Actually, this is a couple years ago, um, but they had their business back here and they've been working back and forth. And, and uh, most of you know them. If you don't, um, we're going to introduce them in this morning. So if I could have Cr Steve and Chrissy Swift, please come up here. Maybe um, a bit of an emotional morning. At least it is for us. And um, the reason why is how, how, let's just do this. Would you just give us a little bit of your history here at the church? Because it goes back just a little ways. I will start because I was first. And uh, it was in the third grade when my <laughs> family moved out here. Recall going to Betty Jane's uh, Sunday school class and to the best of my Recollection. That's when I realized that there, there was something different about going to church. There was this person, Jesus, that you had to figure out what you were going to do with. Oh, and we got married sometime after the third grade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I uh, came out here when I was 26. And um, Mary Shabo and Kenna. Tom and a few others, Susan and James and Robin and Diane were here, and uh, a whole bunch of kids. And so Mary and I had this way far out idea that we should do something with them. So we did. I'll just mention, I think that was the forerunner of a lot of the kids programs we've run here from the 
Kids Club with uh, Clyde Andrews and then turned into Jam, uh, no, the uh, Awana. Awana Club, and Jam and some summer camps and what you guys are doing today, which is really good to see. We do believe in the ministry to this community uh, and it's a bedroom community. So that's, that's the people that we've touched, that you guys have touched and uh, eventually they leave Yakult. Like we, it took us a while. <laughs> Yeah, so one, one story I have is the, the Swifts, when we, we first got when we first got here six years ago, um, uh, many of you, I know Judy Hunter, she was, she was um, leading up the children's ministry, and I remember she kept talking about Chrissy Swift, I hadn't met Chrissy, and then she pulled out and showed me the Christian education manual that was put together <laughs> by Chrissy, and um, I, I tell you, it was, it was, I've seen a lot of seminary syllabi, that wasn't as well organized as that was. So, um, and yet written for written for our volunteers here. And so, and Steve has served on our elders board as well. So just so much ministry that um, they've laid the groundwork for, I'm personally thankful for. Um, I've had an opportunity to come after the fact and um, work in ground that uh, you guys have cultivated for many, many years. And so um, to make this time even a little bit more special, ask the, the Harmons to come up and, and pray for you guys, um, as we as we send you off, because officially you, you you've kind of been back and forth, but now the business is sold. Is the it did sell Wednesday? Okay, so it's officially sold Wednesday. Their business, and how any more property that's still got to sell? It's uh, about three more parcels. Okay, so there's three more parcels of property out of how many that you've sold over the last thirteen? So. So wow, so quite a bit. So I'm just going to pass this off and allow the Harmons to, to send you off in, in prayer. So, Oh, you bet, you bet. Well, I've got to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't choke up. <laughs> uh, we moved, Dennis Diane and I moved here in this area about a, a year after Charlie and and uh, Risa moved in, which are Steve's parents. And uh, we got to know Charlie and, and Risa real well and had a lot of fellowship with them. And then Steve, he, of course, he was just uh, running around with, and, and that. But uh, in the years that he was here, uh, been over 50 years, you know, so I, it's kind of hard to remember all of the little things, but um, the whole family has meant so much to Diane and I and, and our kids. Uh, Steve and, and Chrissy have meant so much to this church. They, as, I don't know, a lot of you don't know it, but Steve was the chairman of the church for over five years and, and led us real well in that time. And of course, Chrissy worked with the, the youth, and that was one of the, the hearts of our church was working with the youth. And she, she did a wonderful job there. I'm, I'm sure there's been a, a lot of young people come to know the Lord through her efforts and Steve's efforts, and I just really appreciate that. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just love these two people and, and their families, Lord. They're, they're kids too, and we pray and ask that you'd be with them. Just keep them safe as they travel back and forth, and we, we know the traveling isn't over with yet. And Lord, as they transition into a new home, a new place, we pray that as they meet the people there, Lord, that. Uh, that uh, your influence will be brought out through them, Lord, to these people, and that they might be able to make friends as they've made them here, and uh, just uh, continue to show Christ in their lives, Lord, as they uh, do their daily tasks. Uh, we know that uh, a bunch of their or I should say a few of their children are going to be living there close to them, and I pray that we'll be with them too, Lord, and help them to continue to be an influence on their grandchildren as they grow. And Lord, we just ask the best for them. 
uh, keep them well and healthy. And Lord, we just really appreciate their love for you and the influence that they have had on us and pray that you'll just continue to be with them, to bless them. Lord, we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. We love you guys. Whoops. <laughs> You want it back? You want it back? Okay. Uh, oh, you can you can do that. You can do. Do you want people to wait? Yeah. Robin just touched on it, but we are uh, three of our children live in Moscow. Lydia and uh, her family will be there through January doing a rural thing. So, um, kind of a new hub for our family. And I didn't know it was going to be so hard to pull up roots and go, but um, we're we're doing it today. And there's another way you really can get to know a person, um, and that's having them as your landlord and landlords. And um, they, they, they were our, my family's landlord for almost two years. And um, it was, it was uh, not that I didn't think it would be this way, but it was a joy in that relationship with you. And it was interesting because of all the transitions to and from and being here and being in Idaho, many times Chrissy would go back to care for things in Idaho. And, and so that meant Steve was here by himself. And, and um, he would just a number of different times just happen to know when it was dinner time and just <laughs> drop by the house to, to, to say hello. And it just, we happened to just be sitting down for dinner at that same time. So... Uh, <laughs> If I recall, Julie really wanted to live in an old farmhouse, and after a few months in the old house that I grew up in, I think she talked Bill into saying, I want a new house. <laughs> she didn't have to talk me into it. Uh, <laughs> thank you, guys. We love you. Thank you, for, thank you for everything. Okay. Um, you can please turn in your Bibles to the book of Ezra. Ezra. And a few weeks ago, I told you um, I was going to preach my shortest sermon, and I think I lived up to that. Um, and that was difficult. This was, won't be quite as short, but it still is going to be condensed. And so um, I will do my best because of the things that we have going on uh, to, to stick to, to that. But we're going to really just focus on, on one verse. And before we, before we do, there's just a few things I need to draw your attention to. So hopefully you got yourself a bulletin. And I'll just mention on the back side of this bulletin, there is a flyer. And that flyer says, are you a crafter? Uh, this is a, a new um, group. I don't know if we call it a ministry, but there would be definitely ministry type things happening and um, a gift that both Valerie and Joellen and, and Marion are going to be um, just trying to inquire, hey, what do we be interested in as it relates to crafts? And so that, that meeting, if you're interested, or just to get your ideas um, and share suggestions is on December the 4th um, here at the church at 10 a.m. So if you have any more questions, you can see their lovely faces on this bulletin, find them. I think all three of them are here, yes, this morning. So you can find them and uh, ask any questions about that time. But that should be pretty exciting. And, um, and also, will you be doing any welding in that class? No weld? You could be? Okay. All right. Well, I might show up then. That sounds good. No, it's pretty awesome. Thank you for, thank you for putting that together. Um, also, I just want to say this last Thursday we had, or was it Wednesday? No, it was Thursday. We had our senior luncheon. It's the last one of this year, but it was kind of our Thanksgiving potluck, and many of you were there. I want to thank uh, Tandy and, and all those that put so much energy and effort into that time. It was, it was great food, great fellowship, and um, just a good time. So the next one is coming up um, in January. I don't know the exact date. I think it's the last Thursday of every month here at noon. Um, is going to be the senior lunches, so put those on your on your calendar. And the last thing I'll mention is this past week, uh, last Sunday, Dr. Bob was filling the pulpit. Thank you so much, Dr. Bob. And that was because um, the Musgraves and my my wife and I we went to our 
denominational uh, retreat. It's an every other year retreat, kind of designed to bring all of the, the pastors together from our denomination to encourage one another, to be refreshed. It was very much a refreshing. The church, when I showed up here, they put that into my contract that every year I have to go to this this event. And, um, and I'm very thankful it's become my wife's favorite weekend of the year because it's the time just to go away at Sun River and be, be um, waited on hand and foot for the week. And so it was very nice. Thank you very much, especially on the tail end of what was a Pastor's Appreciation Month. And many of you wrote my family and the Musgrave family cards and, and gave us gifts and just want to say how much that means to us from each and every one of you. We feel incredibly blessed to serve in this ministry. And um, it's because there's such graciousness and love that comes from you as a supportive congregation. Um, that's all but one gift that I got, and I brought that up here. Um, it, it comes from, from this. So many nice cards and gifts, but this one kind of um, rose to the surface at the top. Um, the rubber chicken. <laughs> this is what you get as the pastor when your growth group gets together and gives you a gift. Thank you, Wilsons, for, for this. Um, but uh, there was a nice card in there, and it symbolized that we get to go out to a nice chicken dinner together. But anyway, it was, it was just, it was, a, it was a great, great month. So thank you so much for your, your blessings and your gifts. So um, let's, let's, we're going to turn to Ezra chapter 7. Um, let's pray first. We're praying for the Warnke family as our family of the week. We're going to continue to pray for um, the Waring family and Anthony. We're going to pray for our missionaries of the month, which is just to focus on the persecuted church. And so let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we again thank you for the opportunity to be your children. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as your church family. We look to bring glory to your name through our time in your word and through our song and through our fellowship, um, through our service unto you. Uh, we thank you for this time of year as Thanksgiving is coming up. We pray for a coverage for our church, our church family. Uh, as Thanksgiving is approaching, lots of travel, lots of time with family, we pray for we pray for Christ-centered conversations. Give us patience and grace where needed and, and give us love and um, thanksgiving and, and all those things. We, we also um, think of, I forgot to mention, the, the, the church in, in Montana, uh, Shepherd, Shepherd's Church in Montana and uh, Marshall's next door neighbor who moved out there to a small church of 35 people and they've lost three people um, to death this past week, and we just would pray for that congregation, um, that you would give them strength and give them health and hope and, and um, be with their loved ones. We also think of the Waring family. We thank you that um, there is slow but steady improvement with Anthony. We still pray, Lord, that he would be able to communicate and completely come out of um, this, this brain uh, damage and fog that he's currently in. Be with the doctors. Be with the be with Angela and the wearing. We thank you and praise you that she's able to be in there every day now. Um, we also think of the Warren Keys as our prayer family. Jeff and the boys are are hunting in Minnesota today. This week, we just pray for them for success. We pray for them for success in their relationships with one another. It'd be good father son bonding. Pray for safety in their travel. We think also of the request that came through Becca that that they would just be obedient to you. Uh, they would be centered on on Christ and their family. We think of um, all of the the kids, Davin and and Soraya, who are now engaged. We pray for them in their upcoming marriage, and, and we also just think of. Uh, Soraya and Eli and Dane and Audra and Lila as well. Um, Lord, we love you, and we pray now as we turn to your word that you would teach us. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I still need the microphone. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to be in the book of, of Ezra. And uh, Ezra chapter 7. So Ezra, we have not up until this point in time had much opportunity to get to know the man Ezra, but today and moving forward, both the rest of Ezra as well as into the book of Nehemiah, we're going to get to hear more about Ezra. And Ezra was a great, great man. Uh, he is one of, yet not talked about often, but one of the heroes of our faith. Uh, he, he had a, a strong will, a will to lead people. He had a heart for God, a heart for holiness, um, and he had a mind that uh, was bent towards 
the scriptures and scriptural truth. And um, it would not be unwise for us to say, if there's someone we'd like to pattern our heart and our life after, it may very well be the man Ezra. And um, if that's the case, we'd have to ask the question, what is it that made Ezra such a great man? What is it that made him a great man? And what was it that made him not just a great man, but a spiritual success in the eyes of the history that we find in scripture as well as in the eyes of of God. In order to look at that, we have to step back and I wanna give just a little bit of context to where we've been in this book of Ezra. You should have in your bulletin um, a a sheet that is not connected, an individual sheet that shows a timeline. Uh, That is a timeline. We put that specifically in a separate sheet because that will be really helpful as we continue through Ezra and Nehemiah. So you want to might just keep that in the fold of your Bible. Do all of you have that? See what I'm talking about? Okay, great. So with that, you'll notice that Ezra really is broken up into two parts. Part one is chapters one through six. And then if you look all the way over to the right, you'll notice there's part two, and that's chapters seven through 11. Notice that gap in between. That gap represents 58 years. There's 58 years from the end of chapter six, which is part one of Ezra, and the beginning of chapter seven through 11. There's that 58 year gap. And and so within that, one of the questions that you kind of have to ask is like, what was going on? I mean, 58 years is a lot of time. Well, in, in the events of world history, one thing, there's two, two things. The most famous, probably, naval battles took place in that time period between the Persians and the Athenians and the Spartans called the um, Battle of Salamis. It's um, a, an amazing battle. This is actually, there's, there's that battle that took place where a, a small fleet was able to take out a large fleet. And that's not recounted in the biblical story. The other battle that came shortly after that was the Battle of Theophanes. And um, what you'll see in that battle, that's, if you've heard of the Spartans, the Spartans, the, the 300 Spartans that held off this massive Persian army, many movies have been made about this. That, that took place in this same time period. But neither of those very famous, well-known historical events are mentioned at all in the book of Ezra. Some of the leaders are, the king, Darius, and, and Xerxes. But that wasn't mentioned at all in Ezra. There was 58 years. Those were key events. Why wouldn't Ezra mention that? Why wouldn't that be mentioned in, the, in, in our, our biblical texts? Um, and, and one of the reasons why, and probably the primary reason why, is something more important was taking place in those 58 years. And what was taking place in those 58 years was that God was making a man. Uh, he was making a godly man. And that man was a man who, in verse 6, it tells us that God's hand was upon him. God's hand was upon this man, Ezra. And that can mean a lot of things within the Old Testament. But as we've done in this series, we have to bounce between the Old Testament and the New Testament. We live in the New Testament times. And so for us, we can say, well, what does it mean for today, for Christians today, to have the hand of God upon, the hand of God upon us? Well, one of the key things it means today is that any of us who call ourselves Christians, who accepted by faith the unconditional love of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can say the hand of God is on us. God's hand is upon us through his son, Jesus Christ. But in the Old Testament, that's not the same way it worked. Um, the, the Lord blessed Ezra in a very special way. His spirit disp- rested upon Ezra. And, and many of that reason why was because, yes, God did his part by laying his hand upon Ezra, but Ezra had a part to play as well. Um, and so with Ezra, he had God's hand on him, um, but at the same time, he was a faithful servant of God. He was faithful to his calling. He, he wasn't just a puppet that got kind of dangled by these strings that God just kind of pulled and moved the way that he wanted him to do. Um, he had a responsibility and a part. He was a human being. He had a mind. He had a, he had a will. He had a heart. And that heart was made to, and that will was made to, and that mind was made to glorify God as it is for all of us. But not all of us and all of people in history have chosen to engage that mind and that heart and that will in glorifying God. But Ezra did, and he did it in a very special way 
a very special way that, that is laid out in a verse in Ezra chapter 7 that is probably one of the greatest and best verses that outline what it means to have a life of influence. If any of us want to have a life of influence in this life and in this world, it, it could be patterned directly after Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. And this is what it says. Ezra 7, 10 says, for Ezra, that word for there, that's the connection primarily between part one, chapters one through six, and what's happening now in part two. Because in part one, verses chapters one through six, it was about rebuilding a temple, a physical building. But in chapters seven through 11, the focus isn't about a building, the focus is on rebuilding people rebuilding the theological foundation of a people, the Israelites, who struggled with their faithfulness to the Lord. And it was going to take a strong leader with the right stuff in order to carry through and bring about the renewal, the rebuilding of a people of God, a people that were prone towards idolatry, that were prone towards wandering, that were prone towards their own ways. It needed a leader, and we're going to see that leadership played out as we move forward. But in this case, we get to see the, the nuts and the bolts of what it took for this man who God used to bring about the rebuilding of his people in verse 10. It says, for Ezra had set his heart to study the law of the Lord, to do it, to teach it, his statutes and the rules and all of Israel. This is a powerful verse. You've got a very simple outline. And it's a simple outline because I have this ability to make simple things complex. I don't want to do that this morning. This is a very simple outline. And it's actually laid out by the Lord through this book of Ezra in a perfect sequence. I think if you were to switch this order around, this wouldn't work. But for Ezra, he prepared himself. He set his heart to study. Your, your translation, if you use King James or New King James, might say seek. Different translations, same word. To seek, to study the law of God. That's number one in, in the notes that you have there. To, to study God's word. This is the, the first component that really made his life a life of influence. He studied the scriptures, the scriptures that he had at that time. So you have this studying aspect. So verse one, best summary um, here. This is the best summary of what it looks like to have. And, and the, fir the first part of this summary is that he studied God's word. Um, this is a powerful verse uh, for, for people in ministry. This is a powerful verse that in, when I was in seminary, we focused a lot on this verse. We were actually encouraged to memorize this verse. We did memorize this verse because this is kind of the core fundamental base line of what a ministry is. But I think we're missing the point if we think this is just for pastors or for church leaders. This is a, a fundamental component to every follower of Jesus Christ, to be one that sets their heart on seeking the Lord, on studying the, the Lord and his word specifically. Because we set our hearts on all kinds of things. That's what idolatry is. But as followers of Christ, we say, we no longer live to our own will, but we live unto the Lord, and we set our heart to study his word. And so that's, that's, it's good, it's true for all of us. And so he's committed, Ezra, to setting his heart upon the study of the word of God, the Bible. That's what he's focused on. So he puts his heart on this issue, he focuses on it, but then he does something that is so important, and the text lays this out. He sets his heart to study the word, but secondly, he does the word. He doesn't just focus on learning it, getting it in his head. He actually applies it. He starts to do it. And all of us in here are guilty of this, of, of knowing far more than we actually apply. It's part of the fallenness of our, of our humankind. It's part of the depravity of man. It's part of being a descendants of, of Adam and Eve, is that we're prone towards um, following and having head knowledge, but not actually engaging that in real life. Well, Ezra led the way here. He says, I study the word, but I don't study the word just to gain it for my own understanding. I actually go and I apply that. I, I, I set my mind on studying it, but then I also find ways to make that very applicable in the life that I am called to live. And so with this, we don't know exactly what this looked like, how he studied it, but also how he did it. Well, we do know how he did it. 
we'll see that as it lays out the rest of, of chapter 7 through 11 and following. Now, another place that you'll mention if you're in a growth group, you'll have this as one of your points to read, and that's in the, the chapter 8 of the book of Nehemiah. You get a really good description in another book, the book of Nehemiah, on what it looked like for, for Nehemiah to really grow in the word of God and what that looked like and the implications that that had for his life. But so important, so important that he would apply. One of the things that's neat about current biblical education and seminaries and, and anything like that is that there was one point in time where you would go and you would get your degree um, and then you'd go and you would start teaching. That would be what would happen. But now most all seminaries, most all Bible colleges that are worth their salt require their students to be involved in, in ministry, student, you know, finding ways to engage in. So that way when they graduate, they graduate with more than just a certificate that tells them they can teach. The whole purpose of that is to make sure that they're applying and they're doing. And what about us? How about us, we may not go to seminary or Bible college, but we're followers of Christ and we're called to do. We're called to engage. Um, we saw that with Steve and Chrissy as, as Robin and Diane displayed what they've done for this church body. And I see it in many, many, if not all of your faces in one way or another. Sometimes your ministries are directly involved in being part of a team, but many times it's behind the scenes and you're serving in other, other ways. But I would say keep that up. Because we have to be doing the word, not just studying the word, um, but to do it as well. Um, all right, the third and the final one here is, is that Ezra didn't just study, he didn't just do, but then he went to teach. This is a natural progression, the natural progression, um, teaching the, the statutes, the rules to, to Israel. That's what he would have done. Um, and we have this famous slogan, you know, Nike slogan, just do it. Most all of us know that. But Ezra would have said, I can't just do it. I first have to study, study it. Then I have to do it. But then I have to go on and I have to teach it. I have to let it go. It has to flow out. And so just notice the, the, the scope of Ezra's vision for ministry. He wanted to teach God's law to Israel. But before he did that, he studied it and then he did it. Um, he wanted to reach this entire nation with the word of God. That's what his desire was. That was what his goal was. And that's what he ended up doing. Um, now, many of us could say, well, I'm not a teacher. Here's the reality is, every one of us in here has influence. We have influence in some way. And you might not be a teacher like I would be a teacher or someone else you would think of like Ezra would be a teacher. But we do all have influence and we have to recognize it because as we live life and we see this especially as parents and grandparents, our kids are, are learning from us all of the time. Whether we are a Bible teacher from a pulpit or whether we're a welder or a teacher or, or anything else, our kids are learning and people around us are watching. And so I don't think you can be a follower of Christ and not in some way have the, the gumption within your soul to be an influencer, to let that truth that you're practicing and living out in your marriage, in your, your workplace, in your church, to somehow rub off on other people. Uh, that is a central, central principle within the scriptures. Ezra did it very very practically and in a very real way, but we're called as well to do that within our own lives and our own ministries. And so all of this truly is, is, is very easy to apply as we think about these things. Spend time in God's word and then apply God's word. Do what it says uh, and then find ways, if not naturally, maybe it's unnaturally find ways to communicate this to others. If you have desires and want to know, know more of the word, we, we have opportunities here, whether it's in growth groups or we have our expositors Bible class that Dr. Bob teaches between the services. It's, uh, that's, it's even free. It shouldn't be free. It's really good, uh, but it's free of charge. Um, and um, it's, it's just a really good time to dive a little bit deeper, but also in your own personal time. Um, to spend time with the Word of God open where we have attentive hearts and minds listening to this. Um, so I'll make this, this clunky transition at this point, because also looking at the clock. Um, the clunky transition is um, three weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, we, the, the elders came up and said, you know, we're going to ask the congregation if, if you're, this is your church home, 
And if, especially um, if you've been here for a long time, or especially if you've been here just for within the last few years, um, would, would you seek to prepare your heart for what the Lord would have you do in helping us move through the next phase of our building project? Uh, we've already talked about what's been done, and I, I'm, I'm tempted to recap it. We've shown the video of all the work that's been done up until this point. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to take another push over this next year in order for us to get the building erected. The building that we have paid for, which is going to be here um, starting at the end of this year, neat meetings are taking place that are going to be putting putting um, a lot of the, the pieces of the puzzle together. So um, we've asked you to think and prepare your heart about that over this last few weeks. If you haven't been here, then this will seem out of the blue. If you're visiting, if you're not a, a regular tender, if this isn't your church home, or this really isn't for you, unless the Lord is speaking that to you. But this is really designed for those people that are part of this church family. So with that being said, I'm going to invite the, we're going to invite the, um, the ushers to pass out these commitment cards that we've talked about so this shouldn't be out of the blue and then Andy's going to come up and he's going to kind of walk through one more time um, what what you're getting and what we're we're asking that you would do with these cards so I'll pass this off to you <laughs> says I can't take his rubber chicken can't take his rubber chicken. It's okay. There's enough cards, uh, envelopes for everybody, uh, at least one per family. If you give through both your husband and your wife, then you can take one each. It's entirely up to you. You know, it's, uh, it's been an effort that has involved everybody in our church. And I mean not the building, but the body of believers. And that's why we did Moving by Faith, is to allow for the growing ministries in this body of believers. It's not to build a monument. It's to provide the resources, even as Ezra did in his ministry, so that the work can go on. And I want to thank the elders all of those who served on the Moving by Faith Committee, the numerous people in the last two years who have physically done things to get us where we are today. We need to raise, uh, by God's grace, $600,000 in the next 12 months. And I'd like to share, first of all, some good news with you about money. Money is a very mundane thing, but try to do without it, and you don't get very far in the world we live in. We have received about $1.2 million to date. That does not include the grant. Our goal was $1 million, so we've exceeded the goal, which we mentioned uh, three Sundays ago. Um, our financial folks have put together numbers that tell me that at this point, we have almost $32,000 above what we have spent, including the shell. And so we're that much ahead of what you see done and what's been provided. We have $137,000 that's remaining on the commitments that people made two years ago when we gave you commitment cards. That's $137,000. Right now there's $35,000 sitting in the general fund that if you choose to move that, to moving by faith, that will give us $205,000 towards the $600,000 that we need. Now, I call that a head start. That's a great start. So if all of those come in, we have about $400,000 to raise. I don't think that's unachievable. But if you look at your commitment sheet, it's not really a card, I would just like to walk through that quickly and you should have a pencil or a pen. We invite you to complete those cards here. If you have a strong conviction that you want to take it home and fill it out at home and bring it back, we sure hope that you bring it back. But let's look at the first line. So two years ago, many of us made a commitment, and we have fulfilled that commitment. If you're one of those who are all done 
with completing your commitment, you would check that box right there. If it's all done, you've completed your commitment. The beautiful thing is some of you who do that still kept on giving, and that's really great. That's wonderful. Now, box number two, if or we made a commitment two years ago and we expect to fulfill that commitment, check that box. You bet you're on target. You plan to complete your commitment by the end of the giving period. That's the box that you check. You're a, you're, you may be a part of that $137,000 that is yet to come in. The third one, in addition to the commitments I or we made two years ago, we believe God is leading us to give an additional commitment of. So for those of you who made commitments already, this is an invitation to say, what can we do in the next year? Can you add to what you have left to give and add some more? It's going to take that to get to the $600,000. Now, this is an invitation. This is entirely up to you and God. No one's checking those numbers. So that's number three. Number four, I said last week as I stood up here, especially at the second service, there are so many new people in our church who have never had that opportunity to have a formal pre presentation or to be invited to give. So if you are not involved and you want to participate, line number four is for you. What would God lead you to give in the next 12 months? How you give that, when you give it, and whether you choose to use cash or stocks or bonds or non-cash gifts, that's entirely up to you. If you choose something that's non-cash, would you make a note of that? Because you'll have to coordinate with someone from our church to make that happen. The next one, <clears throat> if we do not achieve the $600,000 goal, we are looking at some short-term loans because we don't want our workers to stop. We have the resources to back up short-term notes. We have a facility that's valued at a million dollars. We have property over there on 12 acres that if you as members choose to sell some of that, there are plenty of assets to cover any short-term notes. Obviously, the ideal is if you can make a low interest or no interest promissory note. All we're asking for now is, is that something that would interest you? If we need to, and we have your name, we'll come and share more about you. We've gone to an attorney, Dr. Bob met with an attorney to make sure it's all done according to the law. If there's something else you want to give, then there's that one box, other, please specify. I know that one of the ways that some have given is if you're over 70 and a half, and you have an IRA, you can give up to $100,000 every year, and it's not a part of your taxable income. It's one of the greatest ways to give. But you need to talk to your broker and have it go directly to Yakult Community Church. You can't just write a check, or you won't get the advantage of that. So there are many ways to give. What you do is entirely up to you. We pray that God will move each of our hearts to do all we can to make sure we keep our crew moving and we have that building done. When you've completed your card, you can fold it. It goes in the envelope. And uh, let's see, do we want to collect these, Beth, or we just want someone at the back to collect them? Okay, she'll collect them. Beth will collect them back here. All right, that takes part of the giving. Uh, now we're going to move to a short business meeting, right, on our agenda. And Tom is going to do that. So, Tom, if you would come up, please. There's a short ballot, and I'll let Tom take it from there. Oh, that feels good. Okay, we have a very short business meeting, and it's my favorite kind of business meeting, because right afterwards we have pie. But seriously, we have a few things to vote on, and uh, let me just pray before we do. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we conduct your business, I would ask for your wisdom, I would ask for unity and peace with the decisions we make here today. In Jesus' name, amen. So, does everybody have a ballot? Almost. I'm just going to go over quickly what we'll be voting on. Uh, as some of you, some of you know, Deidre Northern has 
Northern has been a financial secretary in the past. She's back east with her husband, helping family get through schooling. So we've been short some people, and in the meantime, Linda Dorr and Trish Peters have been helping out, and we'd like to officially vote on both of them. So that would be uh, item one and item two. Item three is, do you approve of soliciting short-term loans from within the congregation? And as Andy just said, uh, this could be a good way, backed up by the church property here, or the possible sale of the property uh, if we decided on the other side of the uh, other end of the church property down there, uh, would be a way of securing a loan. And the third is, do you approve a monthly transferring of funds throughout the building project to our MBF fund? So basically, we like to keep six months on hand operating expenses just in case. And uh, we've been coming back to the congregation and asking for a vote when it's time to transfer. We get excess funds transfer over. We just like to make this automatic where we keep that six months always. We never touch that. But above and beyond that, we can just transfer it into MBF without having to keep coming up for a vote. So with that being said, uh, I forgot to call this meeting to order. So uh, after explaining that, I'm going to call this meeting to order, and we're going to vote. So if you would take your card. And one more thing. Uh, if you're a member, please mark member. If you're a non-member, we would still like to see your vote. And I would suggest you join the membership class and become a member. Don't be like Sherry and I and drag your feet for years. Just go ahead and do it. But uh, we'd like to see what your vote is, even though it won't officially count. And uh, there we go. Are there any questions? Good. Pi is on its way. Everybody vote, and we'll have the ushers collect these cards. And we're going to close in song. Yes. Yes. When you write a check for the whole church, please, if you intend, I'm going to go to the church and have a commission or a group inviting. Please note that on the check. Write it on the check so that we know where the credit is. Thank you, Linda. Okay, we're going to have the worship team come up and close with music. So as we close the service, you guys want to stand up and join us as we worship together?
our ransom. You are dismissed, so go and have a wonderful day, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs>